We're going to go ahead and get started. I had a request for us to start because uh, someone said that they didn't want to miss the season four uh, opening uh, Duck Dynasty tonight. So we're going to get y'all out before that. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for being out here tonight um, to join and participate in the District 7 Community Budget Input Hearings. Your attendance certainly tonight reflects um, that the budget process is very important. Um, and kind of just a quick snapshot of the budget. The budget is balanced. Um, it was presented to us back on uh, August 8th by the city manager. And uh, tonight will be an opportunity to look at the proposed budget to see how it aligns with our values here in District 7, what's important to us like streets and drainage and curbs and sidewalks, animal, animal care, um, solid waste services, everything that uh, impacts us on a daily basis from a city perspective. Um, we have city staff on hand that's here tonight. I want to thank them uh, for having all hands on deck tonight to answer questions and, and really uh, to be here in support of, of, uh, of y'all because y'all's input is extremely important so that I can take that back to the city manager and to staff so that, again, it's a budget that's, that's, uh, that reflects our values here in District 7. I also want to thank the St. Paul community for hosting us tonight. I want to thank Father Charles and Mary Davila. Thank you so much for hosting us tonight. And I also want to thank my wife and our two boys for being here tonight as well. My wife runs our checkbook at the house like a hawk. So she's here tonight to help us as well and to help me. So, <laughs> But I want to thank them so much for being here and they're in the back table. Uh, but we're going to kick it off. I want to turn it over to Assistant City Manager Carlos Contreras, who's here tonight on behalf of Cheryl Scully, City Manager, but is um, prepared to answer questions and to uh, kind of lead us into the next uh, aspect of the uh, of tonight's budget input here in the meeting. So thank you. With that, Carlos. Thank you, Councilman. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for coming out. Cheryl, apologize she can't be here. She's still the council. Councilman left early. Uh, they're still working, busy working over there, but she sends her request. Uh, I'm Carlos Contreras. I'm an assistant city manager. I have a number of our staff members here with us. My colleague, Gloria Gustavo, another assistant city manager. Back in the back over there, Maria Dia Gomez, our budget director, who is principally responsible for all the hard work that's going into our budget preparation. We also have a number of city staff members that are here, uh, as Councilman indicated, uh, budget I mean, uh, directors of departments and assistant directors. They're here to assist with the discussion at the table, and I'd like to have them introduce themselves, tell you what, what departments they're with. Uh, so if we can start at this table right over here, go right ahead. My name is Natalie Balderrama. I'm an assistant director with the Human Resources Department with the City of San Antonio. Hi, I'm Kathy Donnellan. I'm the assistant library director. Hi, I'm Richard Martinez. I'm the interim assistant director for Public Works. Hello, I'm assistant chief for operating for the San Antonio Fire Department. Good evening, everyone. My name is Geraldine Garcia. I'm the Assistant Chief for the San Antonio Police Department, the Operations Bureau. My name is Richard Keith. I'm Interim Assistant Director at the Department of Human Services. I'm Josephine Valencia, Assistant Director with the Solid Waste Department. I'm Nikki Ramos. I'm the Assistant Director with Parks and Recreation. Is that everybody? Okay. We're going to need a staff member to sit over here. Maria, we're helping get someone to sit up at this table here. We need someone at the front table. Okay. Uh, this process tonight uh, is in preparation for the Council's adoption of the City Budget. As the Councilman indicated, uh, on August 8th, the uh, city manager did propose a budget uh, to city council, and this process is very important, uh, as the councilman said, to, to, to make sure that the budget reflects the values of the community, and that's, that's what we're trying to do here tonight. In 2006, we began the process of holding budget hearings in each of the 10 council districts, and that was done after the budget had been proposed to kind of get feedback on the, on the budget, and they're very popular and very uh, informative, and a lot of the uh, the issues that were important to community members were then included into the finally adopted budget. 
in 2000, or last year, uh, we tried something a little bit different. We broke that up and we held five budget hearings throughout the community before we proposed the budget. So the budget that's being proposed to many of you, did anybody attend any of those that's here today? Thank you very much for doing that and coming back. A lot of the feedback that was provided to us has been included in the proposed, in the manager's proposed budget to council. And I think you'll see, you'll see that. Uh, this process is, again, to get some more feedback so that all of this information can be jotted down and provided to council so they, when they make their final decisions. Uh, as the councilman indicated, the budget is balanced. Uh, we are required by state law to do so, and it is balanced again this year without a property tax increase recommended. So for this evening, uh, we will have a short video that talks about the proposed budget. Uh, so you'll be able to hear that. So that's a very short video. After that, we're going to ask you to write down uh, five service areas that you would like to see either continued or enhanced in our budget. So five items that you think are important and they're priority uh, services uh, for, for the, the group. Because the budget is balanced, uh, we need to probably offset that with some either reduction in in, uh, uh, in services, uh, some cuts, or some additional revenues. So we're going to ask you to identify three cuts that you would make, or three ways that you can raise revenue to pay for those priorities. Okay, so that we'll do that at the, at the end of the video. And then, and then we're going to ask someone from each of the, a citizen from each of the tables to stand out and report back to us. Okay, so why don't we start with the videotape? Hello, I'm City Manager Cheryl Scully. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and allows the city to continue to provide quality services to the community while making the tough decisions to keep the city financially sound. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget focuses on reducing administrative costs and prioritizes public safety, street maintenance, sidewalks, and drainage improvements. The proposed budget reflects policy direction from Mayor Castro, City Council members, and valuable input from the recent community budget hearings held in June of every quadrant of the city. This video was developed to provide a summary of the fiscal year 2014 proposed budget and to enhance understanding of city services and how they're financed. It also highlights areas where the city has been able to recommend budget cuts while maintaining quality service levels to meet community needs. Over the next few weeks, the City Council will carefully consider the proposals included in the proposed budget. Mayor Castro, City Council members, and I look forward to your input prior to the adoption of the city's budget on September 12th, 2013. We appreciate your interest in the City of San Antonio's proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. We are committed to keeping San Antonio financially strong and to making San Antonio a dynamic and healthy community for you and your family. The City is committed to continually improving services for residents of San Antonio and nurturing an environment for future growth and prosperity. Each day, the city's workforce is in the community, working to maintain city streets, protect you and your family, preserve the beauty and integrity of your neighborhoods, and offer services and programs that can enrich the quality of life for all residents. The fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced as required by law and does not include a city property tax rate increase. The general fund, which is the city's largest operating fund, totals $989 million, less than 1% higher than last year. The budget is transparent and reflects City Council policy direction and valuable input from the community. In June of this year, five community budget hearings were held across the city to obtain service priorities from residents before the proposed budget was prepared. Following the community budget hearings, City Council annually establishes priorities and the proposed budget recommendations reflect that input. This year, the high priority services identified are public safety, streets, sidewalks and drainage as our city core services. 
Your city budget is more efficient, and since 2007, the city has reduced the general fund budget by nearly $88 million and has eliminated 1,633 civilian positions with no layoffs. During the same period, the city added 307 police officers and 167 firefighters, reflecting community and city council priorities. The FY 2014 proposed budget reduces $13 million in the general fund and a total of 279 positions in all funds. In the general fund five-year financial forecast presented in May of 2013, revenues were projected to increase at a slower pace than expenditures, necessitating adjustments to be made to the budget. The proposed FY 2014 budget presented to the City Council on August 8th is balanced and reflects the City Council priorities of no city property tax rate increase, budget reductions, and some fee increases. Included in the budget are $5 million in proposed revenue adjustments in the general fund, primarily in EMS transport fees, hazmat inspection fees, and recreational fees. The proposed budget also maintains the city's financial reserves at $89 million, or 9% of general fund appropriations. With the efficiencies added in this year's proposed budget, general fund expenses increased less than 1%. One of the top priorities recommended by the community and the City Council is public safety. The Police Department has applied for a Communities Organized for Public Service hiring grant that will allow for the hiring of additional police officers for three years. The budget includes $307,000 for a city match if the grant is awarded in October 2013 for 10 officers. $1.3 million is also included in the budget to add more police in-car video and other equipment. The fire department provides quality fire prevention and suppression, emergency medical service, and rescue operations to city residents. The proposed budget enhances these efforts by adding three full-time hazmat inspectors to improve inspections, as well as $3 million for the replacement of two hazmat trucks and other fire equipment. Improvement and maintenance of streets and sidewalks continues to be a high priority for residents. The proposed budget continues funding the Infrastructure Maintenance Program at $54 million. This amount includes $35 million to improve streets and $8.5 million for sidewalks. This is $2.5 million more than in 2013, and $4.5 of the $8.5 million will go to improve sidewalks to schools. $3.5 million will be used for drainage improvements, and the final $7 million is for pavement markings, alleyways, traffic signals, and bike facility improvements. In 2012, voters approved a $596 million bond program that includes city-wide improvements for streets, bridges, and sidewalks, drainage and flood control, parks, libraries and public safety facilities. During fiscal year 2014, many of these projects will be designed and approximately half will begin construction. The FY 2014 budget includes $1.25 million for initiatives to revitalize and improve neighborhoods throughout San Antonio. This amount includes the Renew SA program, Ciclovia, and the Fit Pass program. Also included is funding for animal care services to continue to perform 26,500 spay-neuter surgeries and maintain a 75% live release rate. Code continues to be a priority in 2014, and no service reductions for code enforcement are recommended in the budget to ensure a continued focus on improving neighborhoods. San Antonio Senior Centers provide daily health, fitness, and nutrition support to residents 60 years and older. The FY 2014 budget continues to make these services a priority and includes $1.5 million in funding for the expansion of senior centers in districts 2, 6, and 7. The 2014 proposed budget includes $3.5 million for economic development incentives, $1.75 million is dedicated for inner city incentives, and $1.75 million is dedicated to citywide initiatives. A key piece in developing the city's budget is making decisions to maintain a strong financial position while providing quality service delivery. The budget reduces $13 million by streamlining services, focusing on community priorities, and reducing administrative overhead. On average, non-public safety departments in the general fund reduced costs by 
This year's budget reductions include leveraging technology and process improvements in municipal court to reduce the time customers spend at court by 30%, while reducing costs by 914,000. The budget also reduces 1.7 million in administrative overhead, which includes a 50% reduction to travel and other line item budgets, as well as 11 administrative positions. The city will also achieve savings by transitioning services provided at the link centers to existing facilities, including Development Services One Stop, select libraries, and other city facilities. Service modifications totaling 1.3 million include realignment of parks landscape and sanitation maintenance schedules and consolidating 10 open play community centers with low attendance with other full service centers in close proximity. The budget includes a change in the outdoor swimming pool program that is anticipated to save 310,000. This proposal expands the existing six-day-per-week operation of outdoor swimming pools to a seven-day-per-week operation by limiting the number of days each pool is open. Delegate agency funding is proposed to be reduced by 5%, consistent with the average reduction of non-public safety city departments. Funding for Haven for Hope, however, remains at the FY 2013 budget levels. This proposal saves 630000 Solid waste collection services are supported by a user fee collected monthly through your electric bill. The budget includes funding to support a subscription curbside recycling program for organic recycling and adding two additional neighborhood drop-off collection centers. An increase to the solid waste monthly rate of 50 cents is recommended in the 2014 proposed budget, raising the cost to $19.93 per month. Now that you've learned about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget, we want to hear from you. We encourage you to attend any of the community budget hearings. There are five area-wide community meetings held across the city and two at the city council chambers. As required by law, the city budget is scheduled to be adopted on September 12th. The city's new fiscal year begins October 1st. Visit the city's website at www.sanantonio.gov to learn more about the proposed fiscal year 2014 budget and the public input process. You can watch this video again on TVSA, the city's government access channel. As you can see, the city's fiscal year 2014 proposed budget is balanced and continues to provide the community with high quality services and a strong financial position. Uh, ready to go to work? I saw Chief Hood walk in, the fire chief walked in. He was on the phone, but uh, he was here a few minutes ago. Um, also, for those people who just walked in late, uh, what we're going to be doing next is identifying five areas that we would like to see improved or continue, five service areas, and then three areas. There's a chief. Chief Hood, thank you for coming. Just wanted to say hello. There he is, <laughs> our fire chief. And then three service areas that you would like to cut or areas where you think additional revenue can be obtained. So let's start with the hard stuff. Let's talk about the cuts. So if you'll start with the three areas that you say would like you'd like to cut or areas where you'd like to raise revenue, and then we'll go to the five where you would like to, to see increased. Thank you very much. We'll have about 20 to 25 minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started reporting out. Shh. That works every time. Okay, so we're gonna, what we're going to ask you to do is to designate somebody at your table, preferably a resident, a non-city employee, and to stand up and talk about first the cut, or actually the what you would like to add, and then what you would cut. Please identify the table that you're standing, because we're taking down all this information 
and we're going to compile it and give it to city council. So we need to be sure and get this accurately. So where are we ready to begin? Who's going to begin first? Go ahead. Back in the back? Okay, we've got somebody back over there. Please uh, identify the table that you're, that you're at, and then please report out. Oh, they were raising their hands. Sorry. They are raising their hands. Okay. Just pick somebody. How about the table right here in the middle? Here we go. Let's go with them. Y'all are ready? Okay. All right. So if we could just... Thank you very much. Okay. This table right here. Just, oh, let's okay. just go with what you got. How about that? Okay. All right, here we go. We're at table number one, and she nicely brought the book over, and we went through every department in the budget trying to understand where we could cut. And let me tell you, we had a devil of a time trying to find where to cut. Even though there are things we would like to increase, you know, we looked at it. Parks and Rec, we think there could be some more economies in Parks and Rec. We think that some of the agencies that support it possibly could be cut. We're not going to single out anyone, but we think, kind of take a look at those. We did not list a third cut because we were still talking about it and wanting to listen to what other people were cutting, but that's where we stand. And we also find out that there's an awful lot of overlapping from one department to another one. Okay, so if you can talk about what services you would add. Yes, go ahead and report out to both, please. Because we went through it carefully, we kind of decided as a table, we would actually be willing to have a small, emphasize small, raise in taxes or fees if we could accomplish more in the city towards the things we would like to add. Our second one was our libraries. We feel like we don't really want to cut them, cut them a day a week or get rid of the bookmobile and the other things we have to do. And even though you said you weren't cutting fire and police, if that grant comes through, if the grant doesn't come through, you're not adding. So we put fire and police in as something we want to support. Great. Thank you. Okay. How about this table right here? We got a volunteer right over here. Bring the, bring the, here you go. You got one? Okay. Good evening, everybody. We were really busy, and we had kind of a diverse table, so we discussed a lot. Table number? Uh, two. Two. Thank you. We're going in order, I guess. Uh, we would like to see them revisit the health benefits for all the city employees, because some pay a lot, some pay a little, and some don't pay at all into this project. So we'd like that revisited. And definitely, we're still fighting this streetcar thing. I don't know if we can still do anything about it. But, but we, <laughs> everyone at this table seems to feel like that is not anything that they are concerned about. They would like to see it cut. We also want to have no tax abatement for developers and developing projects. And we had a fourth one, and it was the, um, we don't want to see Fiesta expanded. Uh, a lot of extra money will have to go into this project, including uh, we have to pay police time and a half for more days, and yes, and although we all like to party, we think 18 days is a little too long a party. Uh, we did come up with a couple of things that we thought might raise revenue. We would like to see them try and collect delinquent taxes. We would like to see them raise the um, liquor by the drink tax. A uh, one-eighth of a cent someone figured out at this table would raise how much? Anyway, I, I think, pardon me? It would double it. So, you know, a liquor by the drink, you're happy, you're drinking. An eighth of a drink, is not, an eighth of a cent is not going to make that much difference. Okay. And the third thing that we came up with to raise revenue 
was we considered adding more restaurants at the airport. We're making it nicer. We're trying to expand. We want to look better. If you go to any other major city like Dallas, they have a Chili's and they have all sorts of restaurants. They all bring in revenue, including liquor by the drink. So I don't want to keep up on this, on this subject, but it does bring a revenue and it's, people don't seem to mind paying an eighth of a drink, uh, cent more. Anyway, those are extras and are, are things that we want to keep. We want to keep our library budget and if you look at my table, we have happy seniors. So we said uh, anything that pertains with senior services, we want to maintain, whether it's senior cen uh, centers or whether it's the Y senior projects or any project that includes things where seniors can go. We commented the library has had such a tremendous increase during the summer because everybody's so hot and that's a place to go where it is cool and you can find something to do and you can find new friends there. It's a playoff. Drive, Kathy. <laughs> we find friends there. Okay, that, that's all we wanted to do, but we did want to raise extra revenue. Well, certainly great feedback thus far. I really believe tonight we found the solution to the balanced budget here in District 7. So. <laughs> we'll tell Shara that her job's done. So ne the next uh, group that we're going to ask to, say, to uh, present, this group here. Good evening, and thank you for coming out and being among us. At this table, uh, table number six, we came up with three uh, proposed reduction, uh, reductions for the, uh, for the budget. Human services, we need to shift that to community resources. We have too many departments that we need to combine. Eliminate some of those positions, and I'm sorry, if you gotta go, you gotta go. We the people, the senior citizens, the veterans, the children, and the animals need the money, the funding. Okay, we also talked about parks and recreation, how that department is one of the biggest uh, uh, consumers of our budget as well as you know the police and, and uh, EMS and fire of course we can't touch those but we can touch parks and recreations we need to combine some of those uh, positions and eliminate the ones that we uh, deem unnecessary or a redundancy okay we also talked about uh, public works uh, Consolidating them and reducing the overhead with uh, community initiatives. And I'll tell you why. Too many things are being, too much money is being spent out there for doing the same thing. Redundancy. If you didn't learn anything tonight, think about this. Too many times we're doing things twice, three times. We have to eliminate that. Public works and sims need to be combined. One bills them, and the other guy has to go out there and, and uh, deal with them, and they don't know how. So that's important. And that's what we had for our three. Well, of course, we, had, we also mentioned streetcars. $40 million a mile is unacceptable. Okay. We want to uh, talk about our improvements in the budget. For sure, we want to enhance the senior, uh, senior citizen services, job training, same thing with the youth, job training. We need to have happy people working. We just can't be having a good time all the time. And, or not getting any services either. Or poor services. Okay? We talked about animal care services. Brook City Base needs to be revamped and somehow their management system needs to be reviewed. There's a lot of animals that are being abused out there, and no one is doing anything about it. Everything to them is, is going as planned. But we need to have better insight, more uh, reporting, so that people that are in animal care services do their job and not just hang out and have a great time. All right, we talked about um, apprenticeship programs. 
for, for the high school kids that think they was, it was cool to drop out, now they realize here in life, they probably got a, a family or two, and they don't have a job, no education. We need apprenticeship programs, not only to prepare the high school dropouts, but those that don't seek a higher degree, but want a skill. This will provide skilled workers, edu skilled educated workers, and dedicated workers. We need to have that done. I understand that, um, to me, the most important thing in family is family. Although, right now, it's been, it's been proposed that out of the 10 family crisis response teams, they're going to reduce it down to five. We don't need to reduce that. We need to increase it to 20. There's people out there that are being abused and they need help. If you reduce that, the counselors to, to five from ten, you're hurting the city of San Antonio. So please, think about that. And of course, we want to keep the library services and cultural arts support and also solid ways. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zavala. You have this table here? Okay. Hi, my name is Manuela Salais, and I live in District 7. Um, I'm a retired school teacher, so that's why I was selected for this job. Reductions. Reduce total amount used for abatements, incentives, and additional scrutiny of management. Uh, we have a lot of companies that, I agree, come into San Antonio to build San Antonio. But in this building of San Antonio, they get a lot of free rights. And a lot of us thought that that was one of the places that we should reduce the uh, abatements. The next one is explore other options for the streetcar installation that won't require street reconstruction. One of the gentlemen at our table said that it seemed like he, they were going to dig up the street in order to do the, the rails. And his suggestion was that since they were going to do that, that they should try another uh, alternative, to see how they could still have the street carts, but in a different manner that they would use them to where they didn't require to reconstruct the streets. The other one was to explore options for reduction in public safety benefits. Actually, we just said that some of the benefits for the policemen and the firemen are to be reviewed to see if maybe they could come out with a better reduction in the benefits they get. There was an argument about the fact that it is a job that requires a lot of safety, okay, and that they bring a lot of, uh, that there's a lot of things that happen within their jobs that can cause them problems physically and possibly mentally. I taught school. I could have brought home the same disease, and I know I brought the mental part home, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> with that, we want that reviewed, and also for the city employees. Uh, improvements, work for de workforce development. With Project Quest, we have one of the ladies that was sitting here, and she was telling us, about how they train, work with people, educate them in order that they can find jobs with good salaries. And that's one thing San Antonio needs, jobs with good salaries. The parks, we talked about the community centers that were being closed, and we talked about the new ones that are being built. In our case, in District 7, we're getting a new one, so for the senior citizens, I gladly approve of that. The pools, somewhere along the line, we read that some of the pool hours were going to be combined. I, for one, think that a lot of kids, like I was telling them when I taught, I was amazed at the kids that had never been to McDonald's, amazed at a kid that hadn't been to a movie. So, but what during summer, they talked about all they did with the swimming pools. So I think swimming pools should be open as much hours as possible. 
increase parking meters revenue. I don't know if I'm for that, but that's one of the things we've added. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lice. Thank you so much. Thank you. This group here, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. My name's Charlie, and this is my friend Hugo. And um, we're from Table 4, and we had a highly spirited discussion about all of these things at our table, and we were unable to come to a complete consensus. This is what we're going to report. On our cuts, we felt that bicycle programs get a disproportionate benefit for what they contribute as far as taxes and fees is concerned. They need to be cut. Uh, on increases, sidewalk expansion is one of the main things that it really covers a lot of the safety of our children in this city. And, and, and uh, along with uh, street maintenance, uh, it's a very important part of what we need to concentrate on. Is, is making sure that our sidewalks are adequate and safe and well maintained. Um, we want to increase the library budget. The library budget is one that is uh, historically and traditionally neglected uh, and it shows. Uh, and uh, if anybody here uses the library, you go down there over a period of time, you'll see the deterioration. It's not really anything that, that jumps out at you, but over a period of time, you'll see that it is a bit neglected. And there was one more in which we talked about three different programs which come under one department. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and report on that one uh, because we felt like that was pretty important and I think we did reach sort of a consensus on it. And that is uh, police protection. Uh, the first program in under police protection that we talked about is a CRT program, which is a domestic violence program. That one needs to be really looked at very carefully. We also uh, felt like we needed to increase uh, police funding for uh, better patrol and response times, especially in some of the outlying areas of the city. Our city continues to grow and, and uh, we, don't, we didn't feel that our police department is, is growing with it. Uh, and finally, to uh, increase the technology that is available to the police department, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, traffic cameras and things of that nature. And that's it, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you, excellent. Thank you so much. Next table here, table seven. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm with table seven. My name is Miguel, and uh, these are some of the topics that we discussed. Um, we had a very uh, somewhat debate, uh, scrutinize the budget by some of the people here in our tables, how we could uh, eliminate positions to somehow be able to balance the budget. And some of the things that came up, of course, public safety, those are the lesser priorities where the benefits in terms of uh, them contributing more to their health plan as well as their retirement. Also looking at fees to cover some of the costs for some of the programs that exist out there. Um, in other areas, we had uh, priority areas. Streets, of course, are very important. Uh, public safety is a concern. Someone voiced the fact that they never see the police department in their neighborhood, so faith safety becomes a big issue. <laughs> then, of course, uh, we decided that uh, human services in terms of uh, delegate agencies were very important. Senior services, after-school programs, of course, training for... Uh, people to go into the workforce, such as Project Quest, to make sure that people are able to go into and find, uh, a, find a job where they're able to make a living, where they're able to provide for their family. Am I missing anything? Did I cover everything? Okay, we had a, you know, limited pr presentation here, but uh, our point 
came across, you know, what our, our group was hoping to voice. Then next we're going to go to table, if I, my eyes, table 11. Hello everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, my name's Frank. I live down the street here by Maverick Elementary. Um, we had our heated discussions within ourselves, um, but it, it's, it's all fine because we're able to air out where we all come from. We're all, we're all diverse. We have different interests. We have different values for our city. And so we approach our, our cuts kind of in that manner individually, and then we kind of voted on it pretty much as it, probably as y'all all did too. On cuts, streetcars is, uh, came up first. You know, whether we can do anything about it now or not, but that was, that was the first thing that came up. Second one was um, city uh, employees or elected officials travel expenses, they seem to be spending a lot of money on, on uh, travel, and we feel that that's one of the angles that can be cut amongst the city government within itself as far as employees or, or the, how, they, how they operate, probably on a daily basis or, or their annual conventions and that type of stuff, but that's one of the second, that was the second one that came up. Um, third is fire and police pensions. It wasn't so much cutting it, but putting a stop to it, to keeping it from increasing any more than what it is. Uh, we feel that there's some other cities in the, in the, in the United States that kind of got in a big bind in keeping, pumping money into pensions, whether it's for the government employees, whether it's for fire or safety employees. That, that seems to be a, a big weight on uh, city expense and uh, taxpayer expense, which tend to, in the long run, reduce our, our, I guess, benefits that we get from our taxes otherwise, like streets and sidewalks and that type of stuff. So, but on our, on our added, we, the table voted that adding more to the spay and neuter side of the ACS, rather than to, um, Rather than to build more buildings and, and, and hire more people, we feel that that's one of the angles that we can, that can be attacked at this issue that we have citywide. Um, the, because there's a lot of catch and release programs out there and, and that's, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's helping the city. So that's one angle that we thought and me personally, I thought that up, up front in this issue is to educate people more on the ownership of pets before you, before you acquire a pet, make sure you're going to, it's going to be an expense on the family, an expense on, 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 on your budget. So if that's put up front to, to a young family, because a little one wants a little puppy, and the little puppy becomes an issue a year later, two years later, now they don't need it, they don't want it, not a puppy anymore, and it becomes all our burden. So that's, that's educating up front. I think it's where the concentration should be. And this paid and neuter would, would hopefully uh, stop that issue that we have in reducing it. And then third, youth services through delegate agencies, youth services, uh, very important. I myself, like I was telling our table that I grew up with the boys clubs here in San Antonio and they were very beneficial to us, but they operated in a different manner. But still in all, it, it kept us off the streets on Saturday mornings, we're out there playing football, baseball, whatever sports that were available to us. But uh, I'm I, I, I personally myself, I, I coach here for 16 years, youth baseball here at St. Paul's and uh, Rosedale Park. So I know what youth, youth programs are. They're very good, very beneficial. A lot of the kids benefit. And you don't see the results of it until they're like 25, 30 years old because I, I run into some of the boys and they're doing well. And hopefully it had to do with being a team, getting along with other people, and learning life lessons of that sort. So that was it. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Number two, library hours. <laughs> I got carried away with it. Li library hours, um, 
that, that was an issue uh, that, that uh, we feel that it's also beneficial to youth. Uh, I understand that there's new libraries, com libraries coming up that are going to the computer uh, automated type of system. So hopefully that, that'll help. But again, I, I'm only, I can only speak for myself. And growing up in the West Side, every Saturday morning, uh, uh, one of the library trucks used to go and they used to park there in the old Empire Plaza parking lot. I don't know if anybody even knows what that area is, corner of Radins or Zamora Street. I grew up in that area, and Saturday mornings I was there. And if it weren't for that truck being there, my reading would have been failing at school. Because I, I think I did, that helped me personally. And a lot of other kids that are, used to go there on Saturday morning. So uh, library hours are important, libraries are important overall. So. That's our three issues that we figure that we can either add or increase in funding or maybe just uh, focus in more on our services with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fonseca. Thank you. Next, we'll have table eight. Right here, this one. Thank you. Um. Some of our funding priorities are um, adult literacy programs, um, keep, keep funding for them. Also the fire department, don't make any cuts in, in that department, uh, including benefits. Uh, keep low fees for dance, music class at community centers. Uh, these, a, a lot of these people would not be able to afford a raise, which is what the Parks and Recreation Department wants to raise the fees for everyone. And a lot of these people would not be able to afford these, these um, raises. And as it is, these uh, kids and adults bring free entertainment with their dances and their music to the community, such as at the Arneson Theater, the, the Market Square, um, also support uh, the expanded senior centers. Keep crisis response team at a current level. Um, we feel that a lot of uh, people uh, suffer domestic abuse. And uh, one gentleman was talking that a, a lot of these people feel that talking to a counselor um, has uh, been a life changer for them. Cuts, uh, tax abatements, and economic incentives uh, to companies that do not yield a benefit to our city. Bonus pays for executives is a, a cut that we could have. And reduce city manager staff. One gentleman was talking that um, a few years ago, the city manager has had six people under her, and now she has eight. Additional revenue source uh, require developers to build new parks and uh, sidewalks. Open county school libraries and playgrounds to public, more city county partnership. Hire outside agency to study true staffing need of our city uh, to get rid of any um, excess staff in our city. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, well, I think we have three more tables to go. Uh, right here in the back over here, if we can. And I can't see the table number, so if you'll identify your table number, please. Okay. <laughs> where's Councilman? Councilman, where's Councilman? Right behind you. Hey, Councilman, I work with a wonderful group of men who were very vocal about their frustrations with the city, but before we go into that, they wanted to say thank you for your service with the Military Reserve. And thank you for being our Councilman, because you do it for free, so thank you for minimal pay. <laughs> so, 
So thank you, Councilman. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Okay, our three lesser priorities. Um, maybe reducing the number of trips on the recycling, maybe cutting it down to every two weeks um, as a way of saving there. And then basically our alleys. That was kind of a de debate. <laughs> um, but if it's, there's already a city ordinance out there that's basically with the residents. If, you know, the residents takes care of their half, and we're thinking of maybe enforcing that ordinance. And if the alley's not really being used, why resurface it? Maybe cut down there and also no need for paving. Um, let the maintenance, hold the residents responsible for the maintenance of the alleyways. Unless it's an elderly couple, then maybe make the exception there. Uh, maybe get the associations involved to see if they can help out with the elderly, the senior citizens in their, in their neighborhood. Um, the third lesser priority was libraries. Um, basically, this is stemming from the cost of bringing in new libraries, the cost that's going into building them, the purchasing of the property. So one of the things that our table came up with was library consolidation, um, partnering with school districts and schools in the neighborhood to maybe combine the libraries there to kind of, kind of get a dual use with the schools and the neighborhood. Um, yeah, so basically reducing the need for new libraries, and especially since we're going into higher technology, maybe looking into more of a technological way to kind of get out the, the reading um, with the computers and iPads and laptops going that route, and the e-books, promoting more e-books. So that was one area. Now, our five... Five, <laughs> our five top priorities are police and fire, drainage and infrastructure, senior services, park maintenance, and code enforcement. Those were our five top priorities that we thought that maybe they should be considered to be maintained and funded, at least for this next fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did this table report yet? This table right here. Table five. So blind. Can't see anything. Hello, my name is Sandra Claiborne, and we were table five. Um, I really enjoy our discussion because I believe we had a really good representative sample. Um, according to age, we had youth in our table, we had middle age, <laughs> and we had seniors, and everybody had a lot of ideas, but at the end, we all kind of summer, you know, summarized it into this. Uh, the big um, thing that we all agreed on around the table was that we needed to um, add to economic development. And bottom line, it's um, basically investing in, in human capital. And the way we, we define investing in human capital would be to first you start at a small age, like, um, uh, Girl Scouts. So you build future leaders through investing in programs like the Girl Scouts and other youth programs. Then you advance to a more advanced stage. You need to um, educate and find people skill training. And that's where we're talking about Project Quest coming in here and developing people, you know, from leaders to skilled labor. From skilled labor, we went to um, college and arts, um, again, investing in education and furthering people along. And then finally, we ended up in the senior um, services, and that's investing in basically our seniors in the community and at the end, um, uh, helping them with services. A lot of seniors that were saying that there's a lot of problems with the facilities and, and health care and uh, um, caretakers. So that's how we define investment in human capital throughout the ages to, to define uh, basically investing in um, economic development. Once you go through that process, really, you develop people that will have jobs and will bring, you know, taxes. They will get taxes 
and that gives it back to the community. So it, it comes full circle. That's how we saw it. Um, other areas that we thought would um, we would like improvement, of course, would be um, infrastructure. We're referring to drainage. We're referring to uh, streets, uh, sidewalks, uh, traffic. And then we ended up also um, going further into libraries, parks, pools, again, for the enjoyment of, of children and, and recreation. Um, you know, the kids enjoying the pools, the parks, and libraries to further, again, education. Um, so this is what we were thinking of enhancements or investments. And then I'll pass it along for her to, to define, I believe, the cuts and the uh, increases. Good evening, I'm Serena Medina and I am represent the Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas and Table 5. So we had trouble talking about reductions on what to cut and what not to cut. So our reduction was um, no tax abatements for low wage jobs, which basically means when a company comes into the city, normally the city gives them a tax abatement and sometimes those companies do not pay the people who work for them very good money. They'll pay them minimum wage and they end up just staying in that one job and not really going anywhere. Um, also reductions for self-funded organizations or projects. So saying like um, some museums are funded by outside organizations like um, HEB or Walmart or things like that. And, but they're also getting city money to fund them also. So maybe they can have their own self funds and see how far they get, that gets them and maybe the city can contribute a little still, but not as much as they are. Um, we also talked about other ways we can invest in revenue, which we said an increase in solid waste fees would be fine. We also did talk about increasing our property taxes but for the benefit of um, the community. So basically, if we want to fund these programs, we want to fund the libraries, we want to fund all this stuff, we should be willing to pay a little more to get that funding done. Um, and we also um, talked about increases in the environmental fee. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. I sure wish I was that uh, courageous when I was your age, to be able to get up in front of people and talk. We have two more tables, actually. This one right here. Who? Oh, they did. They don't went, right? You went. Yeah. Our table was table nine. We had a very good discussion on the cuts are first, reduce expansion of roads to outlying areas because it is cost effective. Number two, reduce expansion of sewer and water lines to outlying areas. And number three, reduce development incentives outside of 410. And for and enhancements, number one, don't cut library hours. Number two, network of safe, protected, full-size bike lanes connected to multimodal transportation stations. Number three, child care facilities, after-school programs, and at-risk youth services. Number four, increase resources for complete streets, including sidewalks. Oh, and the number constructed within the city. Number five, increased resources for physical fitness and health programs for families related to the SA 2020. Great, thank you very much. One more table right here. Table 13. We're subscribing to the three Bs of public speaking. Be brief. Be accurate and be seated. For our reductions, we had libraries. We think with uh, the amount of technology out there today that maybe libraries could be further reduced. Uh, we also suggested for reductions the trolleys and streetcars. For um, to maintain or to increase, we felt public safety should stay on that list as a priority. We think they're doing a great job. 
We looked for more bulky and brash, brush pickups to help obviously keep our neighborhoods in great working order. Sidewalk program is also a, a big plus. We'd like to see that maintained. And we have one person at our table that would like to say thank you for her new sidewalk. And our final one, um, lighting for downtown. Around the Majestic Theater, it's a little dark at night, and some an additional increased lighting would help um, more people take advantage of the Majestic Theater. And we'll be seated. Thank you very much. OK, I think we got everybody. Uh, I'm pretty sure we did. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of the city manager, mayor, and council, thank you for coming out. This information, as I indicated earlier, will be provided to city council, and they'll have that, the benefit of that information as they consider uh, the budget. Uh, walking in a few minutes late, was well, still the city council, is uh, deputy city manager Eric Walsh back there in the back. He's still working. Uh, but thank you, Eric, for joining us. And councilman, if you want to just close it out. Uh, before I do that, I just want to tell you uh, that residents will also have an opportunity to provide additional feedback directly to city council at citywide public hearings beginning at 6 p.m in City Council Chambers on Wednesday, August 28th, and Wednesday, September 4th. Two more times at City Council Chambers. You can come in, please provide your input there. There's also two more budget hearings, one tomorrow night and one Tuesday night. That is on Wednesday, that'll be a B session, devoted specifically for public input. It'll be at City Hall Chambers, Chambers okay? Councilman? Thank you, Carlos. Again, I want to thank everybody for being out, coming out tonight. I found this to be very uh, effective, very impactful. Um, some of the things that I heard are uh, reducing redundancies in, in uh, the way we do things, uh, trying to find more resources for our police and fire, taking a look at, at um, uh, areas that, that we can cut where we can be more efficient. Uh, certainly a lot of good input was, was uh, gathered tonight. Our job continues. Uh, we got to take this back to city staff and to rest, the rest of my colleagues uh, to ensure that we have a, a budget, again, that ref reflects what we want to see in District 7 and across the city. So again, thank you all very much for coming out. And like Carlos mentioned, we have a couple of more opportunities uh, to gather input um, on the proposed budget. And then um, adoption of the budget will take place September 12th. But I encourage you all to email us, call us, call our office and uh, continue to give us your feedback. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you all again.